The meeting is now live. Okay. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the executive interview number one for the first order of business for today's activities. We have on this session uh, two uh, able guests on stage who will be discussing on the theme, how do we revamp aviation and trade in Africa through implementation of the single African air transport market and the African continental free trade area. Our first guest is Mr. Eric Ntangengerwa, Senior Policy Officer, Air Transport Infrastructure and Energy Department at the African Union Commission. Eric's role includes mainly the coordination of various air transport projects and programs at continental level, including the operationalization of the single African air transport market. And uh, this is one of the 12 flagship projects of the African Union Agenda 2063. Prior to his appointment at his current role, Eric was the principal civil aviation officer at the East African Aviation Community, where he coordinated the development and implementation of a seamless upper airspace project and a regional framework on partner states cooperation in handling aircraft uh, accidents and incident investigations, among many other regional projects. Our second guest on stage is Ms. Stembiso Dlamini, the acting CEO of South African Tourism. Ms. Lamini is currently the acting CEO and COO of SA Tourism. And uh, she, uh, in, in her career, she started out by successfully setting up the strategic planning, monitoring, and evaluation and reporting function at the National Development Agency of South Africa. She was appointed to her current role as acting CEO of SA Tourism at various interval since her appointment in the organization in 2014. And again, from July to November, 2021. In 2017, Ms. Dlamini set up the tourism execution business unit when it split from the brand and marketing. She managed the change process across the organization too, which includes people, processes, and systems. She led the establishment of enterprise project management office capability for SA tourism. This includes building, institution, institutionalizing, and implementation. She has got with her a rich experience which she brings on board for today's discussion. Our moderator is Mr. Gausu Konate, the Director, Technical and Operations at AFRA. He is armed with 35 years corporate experience covering ICAO, IATA, and AFRA. He has rejoined AFRA after completing a nine-month consultancy, consultancy contract with the African Development Bank. And uh, I now wish to hand over to Mr. Konate, who will lead the discussions for the next 40 minutes. To remind our participants, please keep your questions and comments on the functions, functions on the platform. For the questions, please use the Q&A tab. And for your comments, please use the comments tab. We will be sharing with the moderator the questions as the discussion unfolds. Over to you, moderator. Thank you, Maureen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon or even good evening, depending on where you are uh, joining us. As introducer, I am Gausu Konate. I will be moderating this session with the two invitees. Uh, the first thing I will do now is to set the scene uh, for our theme of today. So Maureen, can you maybe uh, put uh, my short presentation? Thank you. So to set the scene, I will start by saying that uh, obviously Africa have got a very vast landmass. Indeed, uh, the landmass can accommodate Europe, USA, and Chinese combined all together. 
So air transport is the most suitable mode of transport in Africa for business, for tourism, for trade. And I want to start by saying that connectivity requirements follow trade. Uh, the trading of manufactured product from South Africa to the Eastern African st state boosted the connectivity requirement from South Africa to Kenya, to Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi. And I think also it's, it's, it's worth to mention that the developing trade between China and Africa is also increasing connectivity requirement between China and African states. Indeed, uh, just over a decade, we move from an average of one flight a week from China to Africa to uh, 3,000 average flights a year in 2019. So basically this uh, show you how uh, the requirement for connectivity follow trade. Uh, I know uh, every year uh, in South Africa, there is uh, the Indaba. Uh, now in that type of fair, if uh, obviously we sell successfully uh, at African travel in, in, at uh, the Indaba uh, to German, and then immediately you will see that we will require uh, to have uh, uh, a connectivity between Germany and Tanzania. Yet all these good things, if I can say so, uh, over the four decades, the African aviation sectors follow uh, to an alarming marginalization trend. Indeed, on the continental, uh, intercontinental route market, we show uh, the sale of uh, the share of African uh, to, from uh, moving from 45% in the 80s to less than 20% just before COVID pandemic. So uh, by 2019, a third of intra-Africa air traffic demand was service via hub outside the continent. So clearly uh, aviation is not competitive in Africa. Uh, the entire continental air transport business is only 2% of the world. It was mentioned yesterday already can we move to the next slide, please? So we do have about 16% of the population of the world. Uh, it is also a fact that Africa growing middle class has low, uh, the lowest per capita GDP. We do have a lot of raw material, which are very important in the economic of the world. The local manufacturer sector does not transform the Africa raw material to, I will say, manufacturer or consumer good uh, for middle class uh, consumption in Africa. Africa exports its natural resources and import the goods made from these commodities by international industry for the consumption of African middle class citizens. So the African private sector, uh, sector competitiveness is challenge to regain Africa market of goods and services. Uh, Intra-Africa trade is about 16%. Its entire uh, continental business volume also is like for air traffic about 2% of the global trade. Tourism portrays similar statistic, uh, though the Great Pyramid of Giza, Great Migration of Serengeti and Masai Mara, Victoria Falls, Table Mountain, you name them, are part of various seven wonders of the world. So Africa policymakers launched two flagship programs, the SATA, and I, it was mentioned by Maureen just now, and the uh, African Continental Free Trade Agreement. So these two flagship, uh, and I do have uh, able, as uh, indicated by Maureen, uh, guests with me today, uh, Eric uh, 
Mtangagera and Stembiso Dlamini. So the, these two guests, will be, I will be interviewing them, how these two flagship could really help us to face the challenges I have just mentioned. So I will uh, now start the interview part uh, by asking the questions to the two panelists. Just uh, bear with me to find my questions. Oh, as you heard with all these challenges I have just mentioned. My first question is, uh, with the COVID, definitely our situation has worsened. So the number one focus of our industry now is to start the tourism uh, and the travel industry as there cannot be growth if the industry does not restart. So, so I will start with a lady. What are the main priority uh, for uh, South African tourism to restart this business? So ladies first, therefore I will start by asking Mrs. Dlamini that first question. And obviously I will go back to Eric. Thank you so much, Mr. Moderator, and thank you for all uh, the participants um, and, and, good, and good afternoon uh, from, from South Africa. So I think it's it, it's a very important question. Uh, so in South Africa, when uh, we were hit by the COVID pandemic in 2020, uh, the first thing that the government did was to, to uh, develop an economic uh, recovery and reconstruction uh, program, which looks at all the facets of the economy um, and all the key uh, sectors of the economy to look at uh, how have they been impacted by COVID but also how do we then reconstruct and recover from, from the COVID pandemic. In there, tourism was one of that, which led to the sector led by the Minister of Tourism to develop a, a you know, in, in partnership with private sector as well, uh, to develop a, a, um, a, a tourism sector recovery plan. And part of the sector recovery plan is, it's got uh, three pillars to support that. The first pillar being, how do we rejuvenate the supply side to ensure that uh, we do have supply side, tourism supply side ready when the tourism economy opens. And the, the second part uh, of the tourism recovery plan is how do we begin to create demand in our key source markets overseas, in our key source markets in the continent, uh, including domestic uh, market uh, in South Africa. And the third area is how do we then create an enabling environment where we look at uh, travel facilitation ensure that uh, we've got that capability to, to enable uh, the sector to recover. So that has been uh, you know, largely our focus. So air access, as you can imagine, Mr. Moderator, that uh, it, it is an important uh, you know, variable to actually ensuring that the sector uh, does recover. And it is important indeed for us as South Africa to look at how do we recover post, uh, you know, post uh, towards to, you know, the post COVID uh, levels. And we know that airlift is a major, major in enabling factor. So seeing our, our airline partners resuming traveling to South Africa means that uh, we are starting to see signs of recovery. Of course, 
we do know that a lot of airlines have really battled with the COVID pandemic. Um, and therefore, um, some of them have not really started uh, you know, resuming businesses. But in, in, the, in the dawn of recovery, we would like to see more uh, you know, African airlines resuming uh, you know, uh, operations, but also in, in increasing capacity to that end. Because if you look at our recovery plan, we are saying that tourism would recover domestically and you know, within the co African continent first. Okay, having heard you, I think uh, what you said here, uh, you want to see more African airline resuming uh, business. So uh, Eric, you are in charge of uh, aviation at A A AUC. So what on your side have you done uh, to make sure that the industry restart? Uh, thank you very much, moderator. I also join uh, my colleague uh, Dramini to thank uh, Afra and also the participants uh, for this opportunity. Uh, first of all, uh, as you know, uh, air transport uh, was hardly hit by the COVID-19. Uh, even before, um, uh, I think uh, in March uh, 2020, that's when the first case uh, was found. Uh, so already African Union Commission put up uh, some strategy, a continental strategy to, for the restart uh, of uh, various sectors. Uh, but the, 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 first, uh, the first thing was to see uh, generally all, all the sectors, including air transport, what can be the strategy for Africa. So the Africa CDC came already around March and brought together even all the heads of states. They put up a strategy for Africa for COVID-19. Uh, so air transport was one of the, the, the fastest uh, sectors to meet uh, as all the stakeholders. That was around uh, April 2020. A high level task force was put up, uh, which was led by the African Union Commission, but, but then uh, AFCAC ensured the implementation. So uh, that task force uh, put together uh, strategies, which were also aligned to the ICAO uh, Council Aviation Recovery Task Force. One of the first thing was to see how to resume operations. You remember that uh, during the COVID, uh, most of uh, countries had closed their borders. The first thing to do was to see, especially on the cargo side, because many African airlines had to connect, uh, especially for the delivery of uh, medicines and also the, the testing kits and the equipment, and also to move some of the missions, the teams from the Africa CDC who had to go to support uh, many member states. So that was the first thing to do. Uh, the strategy was put together for the entire air transport sector, but also the, air, the tourism sector at continental level had also met uh, at ministerial level. Uh, secondly, um, after some, you know, the, the recovery, some airlines had helped to, to recover in terms of, uh, uh, you know, distributing the medicines and also distributing the, the, health, the, health, uh, uh, the health workers. Uh, the AUC started working with Africa CDC again, uh, and all stakeholders, including AFCAC, AFRA, IATA, and ICAO, and put up another task force now to harmonize health pro protocols uh, to ensure interoperability between digital certificates. Uh, because uh, as uh, 2020, the, it was the year, the busy year for, for the testing, also making sure that uh, countries uh, get uh, the testing kits. Uh, so interoperability of uh, digital passes and certificates was very key. Uh, and also to ensure that those certificates are recognized both in Africa and uh, in other continents. Uh, another important uh, at activity here was to see uh, how uh, Afka and Afra and also Ayata can develop uh, uh, some, of, some, of the, some of the strategies to, to make sure that on the ground operations continue. Uh, this involved many workshops at continental level in involving uh, DGs of civil aviation authorities to make sure that both the AU high level task force recommendation and also ICAO recommendations are implemented. Uh, last but not least, um, the collaboration among airlines is still uh, very key. In 2020, we have seen uh, a lot of collaboration and also support to the air transport industry uh, from African airlines, uh, but uh, we are still pushing to see how uh, through AFRA, collaboration with AFRA, how this collaboration can be really in enhanced going forward when we are trying to see how all the member states can uh, be covered in terms of vac vaccination, but also in terms of uh, restarting the industry. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, both uh, uh, guests. Now, I do have a second question for you. 
you all uh, notice that uh, our share on the markets, world market level is very small. So we are not a mature uh, market. Therefore, our growth potential or our uh, rate even compared to the other markets seem to be high. Um, however, uh, clearly, uh, what in your organization perspective, uh, the underlying factors of the marginalization or the uncompetitiveness of uh, air transport. I, I will start by the lady again, because obviously as much as uh, airfare are revenue uh, to aviation, it is also seen as cost for uh, the tourism. So therefore, why uh, can you answer to that question? So what is the tourism last case and what are the trained uh, in, in, in a tourism? Are you also seeing marginalization and how, uh, what, what can you take as action in your perspective to make uh, both the tourism and aviation uh, competitive? Mrs. So, Lamini. So, thank you so much. So um, I'll start by saying, if, if you look at air transport really within the tourism uh, sector, it enables millions of people to connect uh, in you know, cultural exchange and also boost the tourism industry in general, which is a really a major contribution, um, you know, factor, a major economic, uh, you know, factor in 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 the in, in the country of origin, but also in the you know a destination tourism destination countries. So so um, we, if you look at our recovery plan. Uh, it is based on air access. So air access is at the center of actually uh, driving this with direct airlift making uh, you know, the, a destination attractive even more for, for, for the business events um, you know, sector. So you've touched on a very important thing, which says, uh, what, what is uh, the key barrier that we're seeing? We've, we conduct on an annual basis, I think three times a year, uh, what we call a brand tracker. So we track our brand you know, across uh, markets where we invest. And one of the key things that come out is that it is expensive to get to South Africa in this instance, uh, because obviously South Africa is sitting at the tip of, of, of the African continent, which says the very first cost that a traveler or a tourist interacts with, it's, a, it's, a, it's an air ticket. So intra-African travel as well is seen to be very expensive with many airlines charging very high fees. And, and the factors leading to high fares includes uh, the fact that most travel within Africa is corporate travel. That's making fares very, very higher as airlines obviously also take advantage of the corporate traveler. So it becomes very difficult for just the travelers to actually tap into that interconnectivity. So, so there is, um, you know, as we know, limited airlift within uh, you know, Africa, which is a huge contributing factor for increased uh, effect, you know, efforts, which means those that are, are flying obviously are operating monopolies. So therefore they've got uh, uh, you know the, the, their own um, uh, opportunity to actually uh, you know play around uh, the the efforts. And from a later point of view, we need to stimulate a lot of um, you know African um, uh, airlines to start operating and start tapping into the opportunity of intra-Africa travel to actually boost uh, you know tourism uh, uh, you know economy for for, for the continent and, and, and the rest of the countries within uh, within the continent. So this is really important that all stakeholders need to come together. Stakeholders meaning is the tourism industry, uh, you know, government, um, uh, uh, you know, stakeholders, policymakers, and so forth and so on need to come together and say what are the, and, and understand what are the key cost drivers that enables African, uh, you know, airlines not to be competitive in this instance, and why? What are the reasons? Why are we not having, uh, you know, a lot of African uh, airlines entering the market for this? called the continent because we believe that there's a huge opportunity for um you know for us as tourism boards within the continent and airlines to collaborate to support travel uh, in and around uh, you know the continent and and i think that is very important so that's what i can say uh, to say there is a, a, a strong need for all the stakeholders uh, to come together to look at what are the key cost drivers and how do we enable uh, entry into the market by uh, you know african airlines in this instance the capacity. I strongly believe that African airlines are the ones that should be lifting out of the continent to the rest of the world and actually lifting from uh, the rest of the world into the continent. 
Uh, right now, it's not the case. Sometimes it's very difficult to actually travel our own continent um, um, and avoid having to travel outside the continent first before you can actually reach another African country. Okay. Now, Eric, you heard that this is the situation. You have even to travel outside before you reach your intra-Africa destination. So can you underline the factors which are really making uh, our industry, the aviation, uh, to not be competitive, therefore being even more and have, seeing that marginalizing trade. So as policymaker, Eric, let us know your views on that. Yeah, thank you, Konate. Um, uh, my colleague ha has already highlighted the, the issues of uh, high cost, uh, but I just brief want to briefly uh, uh, say that um, the main uh, cost dri dri driver of, uh, of this high cost is a uh, is, a, is aviation charges, taxes, and fees, which limits functions and catalytic importance of civil aviation in soci other social economic development, including, of course, uh, tourism. Uh, so um, the second important uh, challenge that uh, African air transport is facing is that many of the carriers, African carriers, are competing with uh, other international carriers, which are coming with in a, in a, an operating environment that provide them with significantly low operating cost, they, they are, they are, therefore putting them at an edge over their African counterparts. And however type of taxes and charges and fees, whether they are directly collected from the passengers or airlines, it all adds up to the cost of travel. Uh, so now um, as, as Africa, African Union Commission, we have already uh, started addressing issue of taxes and charges. The first, the first thing, as you know, we have uh, ICAO policies on taxes, taxes and charges. Uh, so we have conducted some various workshops with the member states and also uh, Rex. Uh, the workshop were coordinated by AFCAC. And this workshop, the main objective was to look at all those ICAO policies, taxes and charges, and try to see why is Africa, why are the member states not implementing uh, these ICAO policies? So the, those workshops came up with recommendations. The recommendations uh, which are going now to, to, the, to the first priority next year to see how can we uh, tackle this, uh, this issue in a coordinated way using all the stakeholders. Remember, this is not air transport only. There are also finance, the finance sector. There are also taxes, custom revenues, and, and there are many stakeholders around it. Uh, so the ministers of transport in June uh, agreed and uh, adopted those recommendations, which were, were, ta were tabled to their meeting, and agreed now to uh, that next year as a priority, we bring together airlines, all stakeholders to see how we can really, uh, uh, you know, address this issue of taxes and charges. Another important challenge, uh, as you know, is connectivity, intra-Africa connectivity, connecting between uh, the cities of Africa. Uh, so uh, one of the, the other priorities to implement SATAM, SATAM as, as a key enabler to improve air transport connectivity. Uh, because uh, when you look at um, the number of, uh, of uh, routes between uh, uh, c uh, African cities, so we Eric, still have very few routes. Eric, yes, moderator, I'm, I'm winding. Just, just, just no, I'm not stopping you because what you are uh, saying now bring me to my third question, okay. uh, which is clearly, uh, can you tell us how the two flagship uh, program, SATAM and uh, African Continent Free Trade Agreement, could be used to leverage uh, here. So I uh, hear you talking about the SATAM, that's why I'm like, let me give him the opportunity to ask my uh, third question. Uh, from sure. your organization uh, perspective, what action are being taken to drive the implementation of SATAM and FCTA? Okay. Back to you. Uh, thank you so much, moderator. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say that uh, on one side, SATAM is going to improve intra-Africa transport connectivity, which will support, again, important cargo and trade routes within Africa. And this is supporting already the, C the, the FCFTA framework. On the other hand, implementation of CFTA, as you know, the operation started in January this year, will support the demand in travel Within, uh, within the continent, which will obviously also justify the need to expand intra-African air transport routes. So these two programs 
are really uh, helping, are, are really supporting each other all are complementary. So to improve air transport services and encourage more competitive air transport industry will obviously uh, create, you know, more businesses and also more, uh, you know, intra, intra trade uh, in, in, in Africa. Uh, secondly, uh, I wanted to say that um, for SATAM particularly, a, a African Union Commission has been really working hard with AFRA to, to make sure that these African airlines can, can really uh, you know, use the, the, the potentials and the benefits that the market is offering, even within 35 member states which have, have already joined. Uh, so this is, uh, this is going to help CFTA and also trade and tourism development. But on the other side, the CFTA is going to, to support the need for travel and improving connectivity. Thank you. So I'm coming back to you, uh, Mrs. Dlamini. So to also hear your uh, organization uh, uh, perspective on um, what action uh, are being taken to drive the implementation of uh, SATAM and uh, the African Continent Free Trade Agreement in the perspective, obviously, as a tourism sector. Mrs. Lamini. I, I welcome what uh, my, my, colleagues, my colleague has uh, already mentioned, because I believe that uh, we believe that as stakeholders, especially in the, in, 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 in the continent, we have to make the ease of travel much more seamless, uh, you know, through stakeholder collaboration. Um, I mean, an example would be, you know, the current health regulations and check-ins at airports and, 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 and requirements of airlines, which is very important that we, we stick to, um, you know, at, at global standards. And I think uh, if we don't do that, the risks that are associated with us not, uh, you know, uh, increasing that capa capacity or capability is that if we have a decreased airlift and airline closures, um, it, it affects outbound, obviously, from our respective countries. And if that declines, it means that we are not going to have inbound as well, which, which is, it is, 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 is very unfortunate. So from our side as SA Tourism, we do know that um, there is an importance of, of um, you know, uh, inflow of traffic outbound and inbound for, to sustain those airlines. So as a, as a destination, we do have um, you know, platforms that we have created that would ensure that we introduce our de destinations. The first thing that needs to happen, which is an outcome of the UNWTO conference of, of, uh, that was held in Namibia, is around how do we reposition Brand Africa? And Brand Africa by actually marketing and promoting destination, uh, destinations within Africa to Africans. So instead of uh, you know, us as Africans aspiring to actually travel overseas, let's aspire to travel the continent first. And, and that means that every country within the continent must actually put their value propositions in order to sell to, to Africans. So right now, with the summer you know, season coming in South Africa, we should be asking ourselves, where am I going in the continent? Uh, and that would actually enable the passenger traffic uh, you know, in and around uh, you know, the continent. Secondly, is, is we need to have, from a business events point of view, We've got African associations. I mean, associations such as this. And you know, when there was no COVID, you would find that we take our association meetings outside the continent. Why can't we actually rotate association meetings, African association meetings, to discuss issues pertaining to the development of our continent, issues pertaining to development of our you know, various sectors, and rotate those association meetings in the continent. That actually allows for intra-continental you know, continental movement of these association and sharing of ideas and, and uh, research and so forth and so on. So what it does, it stimulates uh, you know, um, you know, travel, which enables air airlines to have passengers to travel uh, you know, within uh, you know, the continent. So those are some of the things that we, uh, you know, we've done. You would know that we've got two of our flagship uh, you know, uh, uh, trade platforms, which is Meetings Africa for Business Events, which is uh, going to be held in February. What we do is we bring all the, you know, the players within the business events uh, you know, space. We showcase what the continent has because it's not just South Africa exhibiting at Meetings Africa. It's the rest of the continent as well. We've invited uh, you know, some of the countries within the continent to come in and you know, uh, exhibit their capability of hosting meetings, uh, their, cap their infrastructure capability in terms of you know, research and other infrastructure. 
The second flagship program that we have uh, from a leisure point of view is what African, uh, Africa's travel in there. It happens uh, normally before COVID every May in Durban, uh, you know, in South Africa. So it's coming back next year in, in May. And even that, it is not South African product only that exhibit. We open it up to the rest of the continent to come and exhibit at, at, at Indam, wherein we actually call all buyers from, you know, globally, from overseas markets to come in and shop products and suppliers, uh, you know, in, 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 you know in, 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 in the continent. So as, 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 a, as, a, as, a, as a tourism board, we're very clear that if the country or if the continent wins, South Africa wins. Hence, these two flagship programs took a posture of the African continent as opposed to a South African posture. So these are some of the things that we need to begin to do as, as a continent. We need to cross-sell and, and actually ensure that uh, we can travel the continent ourselves so that we boost the, the, the economic recovery of the continent and we drive the development agenda of the continent ourselves. And that would actually enable the continent to be ready now to be, you know, to, to uh, be ready for global, uh, uh, you know, a, a travel. And if you look at, um, if you look at uh, uh, the projections, um, uh, I think UNWTO did, uh, you know, a, a, a projections through the UNWTO, what we call the tourism barometer, and estimated 54 million tourists, uh, you know, crossed the international borders just in July 2021, which is down by 67% from the same month uh, in, in, in 2019. But the strongest results, um, you know, since uh, it is by, by and large the strongest result uh, since uh, we had uh, the heat of the pandemic uh, in April 2020. Uh, and, and this uh, obviously compares to the estimated 34 million international arrivals, which has been recorded in July 2020, though it is obviously below those figures in, 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 our, in, in, in our context. So it's important to ensure that if we are to drive the recovery, the tourism economy rec recovery, we really have to ensure that we are ready as a continent and the key enabling factors being air transport in this instance. And, and, and I think the challenge for all of us in the continent is how do we ensure that we enable, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 airlines, African airline businesses to operate within the continent first and actually perfect uh, the lifting, you know, in the, you know, intracontinentally uh, before we can start, uh, you know, with the international routes. So that's where I, you know, I, I'll, I'll end it off. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Lamini. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, uh, Maureen, I think I will uh, ask uh, you to now display uh, the slide on the on the on the lab, because obviously we hear clearly uh, several times uh, how the two flagship can be leveraged on uh, in the perspective of uh, of of, of uh, leisure travel and also uh, generally uh, on uh, on aviation uh, to be able to so because of that need for collaboration uh, at, at AFRA, we came up with uh, an idea of uh, holding a stakeholders lab for uh, SATAM and, uh, and the AFCTA effective implementation as shown by Eric, but we both uh, program complement each other. So, and the, the number of, of, of stakeholders are so high. I think uh, some were mentioned by, by, by Eric as well. So if there is no way we can make uh, 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 African aviation uh, competitive on the continent without bringing all these stakeholders together uh, and, and, and be able to work together. Uh, uh, that's how we start by convincing our partners in the industry, in aviation industry. So being uh, the, the IATA, ACI, Council, uh, ourselves, uh, the AZA down south there for airline to agree with that idea of conducting uh, a laboratory uh, uh, at the end of the first quarter. Now, what do we want there? The purpose really is to avoid individual stakeholder incremental improvement. We all said, but we are uh, 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 our logistic system uh, being for uh, for carrying tourism or uh, business traveler in Africa is not competitive. Therefore, uh, we need to come uh, to to come together uh, 
and look for outside solution to implement both these two complementary uh, program, which obviously support each other collectively and effectively. So the, 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 what we want to do in the lab is or, or to push uh, the participant of the lab uh, to do is, but the manufacturer industry transform Africa mat uh, raw material into a competitive product to develop intra-Africa trade to raise uh, to 50% by 2025. Now, some people might find it uh, a bit uh, uh, pretending, but the idea is very clear. When uh, you can see uh, some, some uh, products being mat uh, manufactured from the, our raw material outside and being now sold in our region, it means really we need to do that exercise. The more we will transform, don't forget that the industry outside the continent even pay for transport to take the raw, uh, raw material to their uh, places, transfer them, pay the transfer again and come back so, and sell it. So we should have this part maybe a bit lessened if our transport system is efficient. So therefore, uh, we, if we come together as stakeholders, then uh, we will look at how we do that. You hear it several times, cost, cost, cost. So the aviation supply chain must reduce its cost significantly, but the air passenger and freight quarters pay total fare and cargo rates three times lower than the 2019 price by 2025. Uh, why am I saying that? Uh, if you remember, I, in, in initially when I was painting this uh, scene, I indicated clearly that uh, the middle class, African middle class have a lowest GDP. So if we can make it affordable to Africa so that the intra-Africa, which we are not seeing happening, being for uh, tourism, uh, being for business, uh, being even for selling product uh, manufacturer in Africa. So if we make it at the level of these uh, uh, middle class citizen, then we will be competitive for the rest of the world. Since elsewhere, their uh, per capita GDP is higher. So then if our people can afford it, then we, we will be we're also winning the international market. So it is important that the supply chain of uh, uh, stakeholders of aviation, trade, tourism sector, they must make air transport consumption products also, the hospitality facilities and service affordable to African citizens. This principle must be very, very crucial at the laboratory so that any solution we will be looking for must realize that. The competitive gain, obviously, uh, as I say, in these three sectors on intra-African market will definitely blossom the sustainable development of the world market because uh, their power of buying is higher. And uh, I think the, therefore the financial institution and states need to fund the initiative that support the expansion of the manufacturing industry hospitality, trade, and air, air transport. If the trade uh, is intra-Africa trade grow, like I saw the figures from one flight uh, requirement a week, uh, uh, 10 years ago, it became uh, 3,000 flights a year uh, down the line. So if that we can stimulate, we put our costs of producing, of manufacturing, uh, African product from the raw material to that type of level, uh, definitely that will happen. And the traders will also be taking flying by air. So this is uh, why I want to appeal here. If you are listening to this session and you do have ideas, please don't push out any of your ideas. They are all good. As much as they are going to reduce cost for manufacturing, cost uh, for uh, air transport, cost for the hospitality, 
they are good. So we want all these ideas, think of out, out of a box solution, uh, reducing these costs so that the intra-Africa uh, uh, markets is regained by African industry, by uh, hoteliers in Africa, by uh, air, air, airline in Africa. So please join us. Uh, this is really what we want. Uh, we are looking at the end of the first quarter next year uh, to, to be able to conduct this laboratory. The industry agreed and we were able to sell, I think the idea to the state, at least uh, to AFCAC and African Union. And uh, we, we, we just passed yesterday a resolution at AFRA level uh, for the laboratory. So if now uh, any of the two of my executive uh, there, if you want to say something about uh, this, because this is very important stakeholders approach, uh, you are welcome to do so now. I will start by Eric. Yeah, thank you, moderator. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Eric. Yes, yes. Uh, I just wanted to add that um, we are, as AUC, we are ready to uh, to work with Afra on this uh, lab. Uh, this is a, a this is a brilliant initiative. Uh, but uh, in addition to this lab, uh, yesterday we have been talking of this continental uh, study on the benefits of SATAM, which also highlighted the benefits uh, to the trade and tourism industry. Uh, so we are going to use uh, the outcome of this continental study to really, uh, even before the lab, uh, to really uh, demonstrate, because the challenge has always been uh, a gap on the information. Uh, the decision makers in Africa uh, have been, uh, you know, uh, lacking this information on the on the key benefits and what does it translate uh, on the ground and on the specific value does it have on each of the of the 55 uh, AU member states. So this uh, continental study is going to be used as a tool for us to enter into this lab and bring together all the stakeholders. So AUC and AFCAC, uh, we have already uh, made provision to support this and also the YD monitoring body, which is meeting uh, in a month's time, uh, uh, no, this month. So we'll be able to strategize and make sure this lab workshop uh, can, can bring us some, some energy to, to implement SATAM and also other flagship projects. Thank you, Pondere. Thank you very much. Uh, Lamini, any addition from your side? Thank you, um, uh, moderator. I think it's, it's, it's an important um, uh, information that you've shared, and it's important that uh, every, all the initiatives at some point come together so that we don't have multiple initiatives uh, happening and, and we're all trying to solve the same problem. I think in 2020, we had uh, African tourism ministers, um, uh, you know, of the Bureau of Subcommittee of, 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 on Tourism of the AU. Um, but, meeting, looking at, um, you know, a, a, I think a specialized technical committee uh, on transport, uh, transcontinental and, 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 and interregional infrastructure. They, they met and they adopted a resolution to set up a high level task uh, a, a, a force, which comprises of both, uh, you know, public and private sector to develop a, 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 a tourism, a continental tourism recovery strategy that would in turn help or assist the African tourism industry to recover from the you know, impact of COVID-19 pandemic. I think this is a great initiative. I think that some of the key issues that you've raised here should actually find themselves in the, in the, in, in the plans of that task team to look at how does aviation now plays a role in enabling sector, you know, tourism sector recovery and, and obviously other uh, economic uh, you know, sectors of, 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 uh, you know, of our respective countries. So I think instead of actually having multiple things, I do obviously welcome the, the idea of having a, you know, that lab. Let's latch on the, uh, what the African Union has, has, has done, what the African tourism ministers have done, particularly on tourism issues and, and, and how we um, you know, assist the, 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 the tourism in the continent to, uh, to recover. So that some of these elements make a part of that agenda uh, as well, so that we can see some fruition you know, on it. That would be my contribution. Okay, I think uh, uh, our time is not on our side, but uh, before we wind up, I will uh, ask um, 
uh, since uh, Eric and then uh, uh, Lamini uh, to give us in one minute uh, your takeaway from, from this session. Eric. Yeah, thank you, moderator. Uh, one important takeaway is that um, uh, in, in the post recovery uh, process, we have been doing a lot, uh, but I think one key thing we need to, to, to focus on is implementation because we already have uh, too many policies. We have money, many policies, we have the framework. We, we know where we need to, to be. We even know uh, what kind of uh, root network do we need for Africa to be able to really function and also recover. Uh, so I think the first thing is to improve on the advocacy uh, the, 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 the gap on information. We have now the continental study, which has given us the clear picture of where we want to be. So we need to improve on the, on the advocacy, uh, meet on the ground with member states and also Rex. Uh, secondly, uh, I think we need to, to change the way we are doing, because even before, 20, before COVID, air transport was also having a lot of challenges. So the African airline industry has to also sit together and see what kind of businesses models they can really uh, do to, 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 to change the situation. And, and uh, thirdly, the issue of cost. We need to really uh, use this initiative of LAB to see how we can uh, reduce the cost, uh, remove uh, these issues of taxes. Thank you, moderator. Mrs. Lamini. Thank you so much. I think my colleague has really put a, a good summary. I think uh, all the policies and you're saying the research is out there, we need to actually get the work that um, uh, uh, the association has done out there. So which is the advocacy work that he's talking about. So it will be very interesting to actually get those reports shared as widely as possible so that we can actually get to a point where we've got a single understanding of what the issues are. But the second thing which I agree with him totally is the implementation. If we know exactly what needs to, done, to be done, uh, we need to now start saying, what are we implementing? And, and we've got to actually choose small things and have small wins because we can't really, you know, obviously deal with all the issues that we have at once. We've got to look at what are the quick wins and focus on those and implement quite well and get lessons learned and we move on to the next thing because I don't think we can do everything at once uh, because if we do that approach, things fall through the cracks and we're unable to actually show the impact of, of, of the work that has been done. And my last point would be, I think it, the, the stakeholder collaboration, stakeholder collaboration is quite important. It doesn't help talking about we've done research, we know what to do, let's implement, and yet we have all the stakeholders not buying in in terms of the execution plan and how we're going to hold each other accountable in terms of uh, you know, implementing some of the recommendations that are coming out of these studies and the research and all the endless workshops that have uh, you know, taken place on how do we improve intercontinental uh, you know, transport and build uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, aviation businesses which are continental based. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat here and the question raised from the floor. Um, there are a few of them um, addressed to Eric. Um, could Eric share the recommendation from the task and charges work that uh, he just described? Um, what is the AUC doing to harmonize uh, and uh, simplify the entry requirement uh, for the restart? Noting that different subregions have different requirements among the countries. Um, can we, I think time is not on our side. Uh, what we'll do, uh, we'll make sure that uh, we collect uh, uh, answers as uh, these questions are addressed, and then we will share them maybe outside uh, this forum. I'm just trying to look at my time here uh, for the, and uh, make sure that what we, we wind up and be able to give the opportunity for the other sessions to also take place. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I think uh, the two, uh, I, I think you agree, but uh, my two guests were. Uh, uh, articulating their views and bringing the real issues uh, on uh, how we revive, revamp the aviation uh, start uh, in, 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 on the continent to make sure that uh, as an, an, an uh, uh, tool, 
to support the development of other key sector areas. Uh, I think uh, not uh, to repeat what they all uh, they what have been discussed. Uh, I just uh, want to say that clearly collaboration, stakeholders collaboration around on how to make uh, African uh, activities, I will say generally, uh, competitive uh, so that they are affordable uh, to middle-class citizen. Uh, this issue came uh, clearly and we, we all agreed that uh, the, the, the multi-sector approach definitely remain a good idea. And uh, the two flagship program give us a strong uh, uh, leverage, if I can say so, because they support each other. Uh, the more you trade, the more you have requirement to travel, uh, the more you are efficient on, on, uh, on uh, 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 transport, the more you make it easy for these uh, uh, goods also to travel and then for the traders and increase generally the middle class GDP. And therefore they become customer again for leisure travel for uh, and others. So uh, we, 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 we agreed uh, clearly, but to revamp uh, the, 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 the sectors, uh, we need uh, that uh, global or uh, cooperation, cooperative, collaborative approach among all stakeholders. Okay, I hope I made justice to my two uh, executives, uh, and I would like to thank them for taking time uh, to participate and uh, share with us uh, their thoughts, uh, and I hope that it added value to people listening to us. Uh, I'm, I'm sure based on even the question I've seen and in, in the chat box now. Maureen, I think I will now come back. Over to you, please. Thank you very much, Dalsu, and uh, thank you very much to our very able panelists for um, joining us for this session and uh, since that discussion could have even gone on for longer, it's just that we are short of time. Uh, to our participants, we um, would have wished to respond to your questions live, but uh, we shall come back to you post webinar. There was one specific question on uh, tourism addressed to SA tourism on the aspect of uh, it not being very easy for Kenyans to go to South Africa for tourism, while the inverse uh, is that uh, it's very easy for South Africans to come to Kenya. And uh, we, are, we are getting uh, questions on what can be done. What, what uh, is SA tourism putting forth as some of the solutions so that we can travel in Africa uh, as Africans uh, easily. And to pick the highlights of the discussion, yes, we need to focus on implementation. We need to focus on um, putting into action a lot that has been said. We have drawn the roadmap. Now it's time to put things and uh, to see the results that we can get out of it. This uh, multi-sectoral approach is uh, very important, looking at the fact that uh, there is a lot of collaboration amongst various entities, various stakeholders that is necessary for us to get out of the box of solutions. Because along, um, for a long time, the discussions of the issues that have been affecting the air transport industry, even before COVID, have been ongoing, but it's the time now that we need to get the concrete solutions so that we can revamp the air transport industry. Thank you so much uh, to uh, all of us. And we have lined up the next executive session, which is another interesting, very interesting discussion, which will be on policy framework and smart regulation to attain conducive environment for African air transport growth and sustainability. We have on stage ICAO, uh, Mr. Adiron Alberto, and our moderator is Angeline Simana from AFCAC. Please join us in the next uh, one minute for the next session and go to your platform, click on executive interview number two. See you, thank you. Thank you.